Well, hello everyone, Dan Herb, Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. If you saw my last video on the illegal ground sluice, cleaning out the illegal ground sluice, you'll know I found a bunch of stuff that may be gold and it might be something else. It baffles me. Let's check that out today, see what it is, do some tests, and see if I actually had all that gold. Or if it's something else and all together. Wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now, in the process of cleaning out this ground sluice, we ended up finding a whole bunch of what we know is absolutely 100% gold. Really nice looking gold, including one nugget. We also found a bunch of lead, which of course washes out with the gold. Lead is heavy like gold washes out the same spot. But then we found this stuff, which we're not too sure what it is. It's heavy like gold. It washed out behind the black sands just like the gold would, just like the lead did. But it is a yellow-ish color. A lot of it's coated in this gray material as well. We don't know if this is gold, if it's lead that has oxidized funny, if it's a mineral of some sort that has just, it looks like gold. We don't know. So today, we're going to throw it under the microscope, have a really close look at it, and then do a couple of simple tests, acid tests, and see if we can determine if this stuff is actually gold or not. Well, that's the goal. Well, let's get to it. First, let's look at some things under the microscope. This is real gold. This is the stuff that we know for a fact came from the sluice that is real gold. You can see the, the gold pieces. You can see some of the black sand there with it. Uh, let's move it around a little bit. There happens to be a piece of lead in there. Bigger pieces, bigger pieces, big pieces. Now, if you have a look at this one right in the middle, this is a piece of that weird stuff. I thought I cleared it all out of here, but apparently I missed that one piece. That's the piece in the middle is a piece of that weird stuff. Heavy like gold, kind of yellow, but mm, definitely not gold. Or definitely not what we know as gold. Here it gets into some of the bigger pieces and, of course, the nugget. Let's see if I can focus that. There we go. Focused on the nugget. Nice. Oh, here, here is one of those strange pieces. There you can really tell the difference between what we know of as gold and one of the weird things. Now I have lots of those. I thought I separated them all out, but apparently I missed a couple. Now other than gold, we also found lead. Let's get some lead in there. Here's the lead. Bring out the lead. Lead has a very unique, distinct look. You can't really mistake lead for gold. No doubt about it, this stuff is definitely lead in here. Oh, that's a piece of pyrite. Iron pyrite, fool's gold. Iron pyrite. Fool's gold. You can always tell fool's gold by its jagged angular cuts and breaks and jagged lines. Definitely not gold. Here's that 22 bullet. So, as you can tell, lead has a very distinct look. Now, let's throw in this weird stuff. Okay, here is the stuff that confuses us. It's very yellow in color, or a lot of it is very yellow in color, but not bright and shiny like you would think of as gold. It is heavy like gold. It washes out behind the black sands, so it's heavier than the black sands. But 
does not look like gold would look. In fact, that piece kind of looks like lead. What it is, we don't know. Some of the pieces definitely look more gold. Some of them definitely look more lead. That looks like a piece of gold down in there. Looks like I may have missed one piece of gold in with this, because that definitely looks like gold. And then this other stuff, under the microscope, definitely does not look like gold. Well, that one kind of does. Looks like a mineral of some sort. You can see the potting, pot marks in the surfaces like you would see in a rock. It could possibly be a rust of some sort that just looks like it's come out a lot more, more yellow than red. Because that really, under the microscope, does not look like gold. Well, maybe we should put this in some acid and see what, it, what the acid does to it. Acid will eat lead. It'll eat calcium, because these could be pieces of rock with calcium on them. It'll eat concrete. It will eat all sorts of things, but it will not eat gold. So let's toss this in an acid bath and see what happens. Now I'm gonna take two or three of these pieces and put it in a hydrochloric acid and see what happens. Instantly starts fizzing. Instantly fizzing. So that definitely means there's something reacting with the acid in there. Concrete would fizz. Calcium would fizz. I'm not sure if lead fizzes. Lead will definitely dissolve. Probably fizzes as well. So we definitely have something going on. I'm going to put two or three pieces in so that we have, you know, a good variety to test. That one really fizzed. Yeah, whatever it is, definitely reacting with the hydrochloric acid. This is a diluted hydrochloric acid, but still very, very strong. Turning a little yellow in some spots, that's some iron dissolving off. Well, let's let that go and see what happens. Put a couple more pieces in there just so we have a good test. I also put that little piece of gold that I missed, so that little bar of gold, I put it in just so we can see what a piece of gold would react like in this acid. Of course, no bubbling, it's just staying the same. That's right for gold. But now I have about six pieces in there slowly dissolving away. And I still have lots of the other stuff. I think I'm going to take some pliers to a piece and see if it crumbles or squishes. Now here's a piece of pyrite on the left and my unknown substance on the right. If I take a pair of pliers in there and grab the pyrite and squeeze, it breaks. It breaks, it crumbles, it shatters. It breaks into tiny little pieces, crumbles, turns to dust. Now what happens when I take my unknown substance and try to squish it? It's malleable. It squishes. It does not crumble like a mineral would. 
and I've done this to three pieces now and all of them did the same thing. It squishes easily. Gold does not usually squish that easily. Lead usually does. I'm really starting to think my unknown substance is lead that was right beside the rusting iron and took on a yellow tinge because of the rust it was beside. That's my sort of thoughts at the moment. And the fact that my acid is turning yellow definitely means there's an iron component to this, which again is probably lead that has iron staining its surface, making it yellow. So after dissolving in hydrochloric acid, some of these pieces are definitely just lead. That's exactly what lead looks like after a quick soak in hydrochloric. But some of them, again, still look like sponge gold or something. That's the little piece of gold that I had put in there, just serve as a test. We got these two pieces really looking like gold, and then a bunch looking like lead. I think, oh, and then one that served halfway between. The acid has turned yellow, so it's definitely dissolved iron off of that lead, and that's probably what was making the lead look yellow, was some iron staining on the lead. But some of these pieces still could be gold. I think the best way to tell now is to go and put these in a coupel, including the lead, melt them down, have the coupel absorb all the lead, get rid of all the lead, and see if there's any gold left behind. That should tell us what that stuff is, for sure. My old eyes, I just can't tell. Oh, to be young again. Okay, let's see what Coupelling shows us. I will be using the Quick Kiln, the KK2 Coupelling Furnace today, specially designed with a flare at the top to let oxygen in to the Coupel to do the proper chemistry and let the lead melt oxidize and get sucked into the Coupel. I'm not going to go into all the details of what Coupelling is versus what smelting versus what melting is. I have lots of videos on that stuff. You can go back in my channel, go back and see previous videos where I explain and show you all about that. Today I'm just going to be using the Coupel in the KK2 Coupelling Furnace to melt the lead, get rid of the lead, and see if there was any gold in that material. That's the plan. Let's get to it. So I put it all in. All of that material, everything that I dissolved in acid and the other stuff is in the coupel, ready to go into the furnace. The furnace has warmed up a little bit already, so I'm not getting my fingers anywhere near that. There we are. Let's get it lit. Let's get lit! Now, because I am sure there is some lead in there, positive lead actually, you can see some of it actually even that melting away. Lead melts are very, very, very. Had to turn down the torches, it was getting too hot. You're not supposed to have the lead glowing bright red like that. It's supposed to be uh, still shiny, silver, metallic looking stuff. Pushing the coupel a bit too hard. What a beautiful day it is today.
And there you go, the little bead of gold left over. There sure wasn't much in that lead, and sure enough, it was mostly just lead. Let's get that out, cool it off, and show you what we got. So it's very hard filming this process with a little plastic camera around heats that are well hot enough to melt the camera. So I couldn't get it sort of all on there, but we did see the flash at the end when the last of the lead went away and left just a gold bead. And there's just the gold bead. While I have the kiln going, I have another project to work on. So in here right now is something totally different from a different project altogether. But it's a nice looking gold. And there we go. The bead is now cool enough that I can take a good shot of it. And I can find some tweezers or something and pull it out of there. Well, it's a pretty little ball of gold, that's for sure. But it's not the five grams I was hoping for. That material that sort of fooled us of what it was, was definitely just lead with an iron oxide staining making it yellow. That little ball of gold would have been that little piece of gold that I saw in there and maybe a few little remnants squished into the lead or something. But that's not even point one. Definitely not the five grams I was hoping for. Now this is about five grams of gold in here, but that is for another video, another story, another time. Nice. Again, this isn't from my dream claim. This is from somewhere else. But that's for another time. So, some conclusions about this material. As I show you the scenery, the beautiful scenery, around my outdoor workshop here. This was obviously just lead that had rolled down the river. You know, old bullet fragments, fishing weights, whatever it might be. Maybe even some natural lead, although I doubt it. Uh, it was obviously just lead that was caught in that ground sluice. And the ground sluice, being made of iron, was rusting in there really badly. And the lead was probably right up against the iron and rusting, getting stained with rust. The lead and rust together probably had a bit of electrolysis going on in there, causing the lead to go white and powdery and oxidized on the surface. And then the staining of the orangish yellow rust on that really made for a material that was very, very deceiving. It almost looked like gold. And because it was lead, it was almost as heavy as gold. And it could fool us really, really easily. I did find lots of nice gold in this ground sluice, and I had a blast cleaning it out, investigating this gold, working with Bryson. It was a great time. I love this job. Hope you enjoyed our adventure with this ground sluice. It was a blast. The next video from The Dream Claim, I do some more exploring and see what other exciting things I can find. And because I'm doing these videos out of order, I know what I found, and I found something amazing. You're not going to want to miss it. Check out my channel next Sunday, 7.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hope you all enjoyed my video. Big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Hurd Prospecting. And until the next video, next Sunday, where I explore the claim and find all sorts of really neat things. Until then, bye.